Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Zoom serious talk. Today, our guest is Ali Kalinch from Gazi University. Ali Hocam has a very long CV. I had to shorten it. So I will just keep it short, okay, to introduce him to you. Ali Hocam is a senior captain and a peacemaker who has served in various multinational missions by NATO and United Nations peacekeeping, as well as national missions in different parts of the homeland. He holds several bachelor's degrees uh, in various areas, such as system engineering and security sciences, business administration, and sociology. And he also holds a master's degree in peace and conflict studies. As you can easily understand, he is a lifelong learner. He's currently an ELT uh, student at Gaza University, so he is also a prospective English language teacher. This evening, the title of his talk is Model United Nations, an experiential learning practice on students' motivation and teachers' teaching skills. Thank you, dear Alio uh, for being our guest speaker tonight, and welcome again. I'm going to Thank leave the screen to you. Thank you very much, dear Aydan Hocam. It's great and honor for me to be here. And thank you very much for providing me the chance, the opportunity to make a presentation here. Maybe uh, it's kind of exaggerating, but it's not. Because this moment is in Turkish, moment. I can die with no... Uh, no regrets. And it's a historic moment, not historical, but a historic moment, a, memor a memorable uh, moment for me. So I want to uh, start my screen sharing. Okay, I hope you can see. Okay, tonight we will examine Model United Nations, an experiential learning practice on students' motivation and teachers' teaching skills. While uh, I conducted my research, uh, there were some keywords, key terms to better understand this phenomenon, Model United Nations. And these are United Nations itself, Model United Nations, experiential learning, English for specific purposes, also known as ESP, motivation and teaching skills. So before, before uh, it started, I want to know uh, what does the United Nations mean to our participants? So please go to uh, menti.com and use the code on the screen or I will make it easier for you. I will write the link here in the chat box so that when you link it uh, when you click it you will go to go directly to the link and you will submit your answers uh, they can be one word or two words expressions adjectives when you hear the united nations uh, what do you think about what does it mean to you And while you are uh, entering, submitting your answers, we will also see the answers here together. Okay. We can wait for a while and you see the answers are coming. Peace in Europe, collaboration, peacekeeping, richness, happiness, 
peace, harmony, solution, help, USA, nations, union, peace, though. Okay, let's wait for more. The answers are coming. Okay. So thanks uh, everyone who have contributed. And uh, at, the the, at the end of the session, we can turn back here. Uh, dear Aydan Hocam, to see the results. Maybe who are uh, there are still uh, people who are submitting their answers. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I want to start with a with an introdu uh, introductory video about the United Nations. A very short video. Okay, here we go. The Second World War caused enormous destruction and left large parts of the world in ruins. That's why the United Nations was established with one main target, to prevent war in the future. The UN is a meeting point where leaders from all around the world can interact. In the UN, countries try to agree on which rules and agreements should apply in the world. The most important topics of discussion in the UN are peace and security, human rights, and sustainable development. The Sustainable Development Goals is the United Nations global agenda to end poverty, fight inequality, and combat climate change by 2030. There are 17 goals and 169 targets. The agenda serves as a joint roadmap for all the countries in the world. One of the main principles of the Sustainable Development Goals is to leave no one behind. The most vulnerable should be given priority. In the UN General Assembly, all countries, small and large, have one vote and the same say. All member states are committed to follow the Constitution of the United Nations, the UN Charter, where peace and human rights are central topics. The most powerful organ of the UN is the Security Council. It's in charge of maintaining peace and security between nations. The Council has 15 members, five of which are permanent, and the remaining 10 members are elected for two-year terms. Even though the UN is the most important organization working for world peace today, it also receives criticism for its shortcomings in the face of modern-day conflicts. Many argue that the organization needs to change to remain important in the future. The UN General Secretary has called for major reforms of the organization. Several member states have supported change to maintain world peace in years to come. No matter how you look at it, the UN is one of the most important meeting points in the world, as well as an arena for international cooperation. Even though the UN isn't perfect, it is the best we've got, and all nations must work together to take care of our world. Okay. Even though it's not perfect, it's the best we've got. I do believe in this point. And let me go back to my slides again. Sorry. Okay. Uh, 
uh, I want to start with United Nations. As you can see on the screen, the Constitution of the United Nations Organization. It's the Charter of the UN. United Nations itself founded in 1945, right after the Second World War. And it's a forum for all nations to come together to discuss and solve global challenges. As uh, on the Constitution, as on the UN Charter, it has four main purposes. The first one, to maintain worldwide peace and security. Second, to develop relations among nations. Third, foster cooperation between nations to solve economic, social, cultural, or humanitarian international problems. And the last one, provide a forum for bringing countries together to meet the UN's purposes and goals. And as of now, currently, it has 193 member states and two observers. And they are Holosi, the state city of Vatican, and the state of Palestine. The main headquarters is located on international territory in New York City in USA. It has uh, six principal organs and they are general assembly. Uh, as we can say, uh, it's the legislative body of the organization. Second one is Security Council. Uh, and we can say this is the executive power, executive body of the organization. The third one is Economic and Social Council. It has secretariat, and you see the current Secretary General Antonio Guterres from Portugal. Uh, it's his uh, second term, by the way. International Court of Justice, the judiciary uh, part, judiciary, judiciary body of the uh, organization. And the last one, Trusteeship Council, but uh, this was uh, suspended in 1994. It is the year Palau, the last UN trust territory, became independent. When it comes to model United Nations, there are uh, many definitions in the literature, Ojan. Uh, I personally can say model United Nations are macro level, real like scenarios, role playing atmosphere, and uh, platforms for neg negotiating. And in 1996, Maldon and Phillips uh, states MUNs are well-established worldwide educational program, programs that is set to offer a wide range of practical and, and academic learning opportunities in the areas of leadership, diplomacy, negotiation, and consensus building. Then definitions have been made for more effective content learning and parallel foreign language learning success has been shown in certain settings. A simulated forum in which young people role play the decision-making protocols of selected committees and assemblies of the United Nations. MUNs, MUN allows students to conduct research into real global problems, learn something about in the intric intricacies of global diplomacy, construct practical, realistic, or real-life solutions to the problems under discussion, and finally, negotiate their proposals to either a successful or an unsuccessful conclusion in collaboration and competition with the delegates or other nations. Delegates usually attend conferences together as delegations sent by their respective school or universities, MUN clubs, though some delegates attend conferences independently. And finally, at MUN events and in preparation classes, students have the opportunity to practice and demonstrate skills in research, negotiation, public speaking, debating, leadership, and academic writing. 
Consequently, as a concurrent learning goal, foreign language students can use the opportunity to build and demonstrate their ability in English in pursuit of realistic and challenging goals in which language skills are a tool for success. So when we uh, look at the history of the MUN worldwide, the first conference to be held after the ratification of the UN Charter that simulated one of the organs of the UN was the Middle Atlantic Model General Assembly hosted by the Lafayette College in 1946. Later, the first MUN conference simulating multiple organs of the UN was held at St. Lawrence University in 1949. Then, MUN events spread to international high schools in Europe in 1968 with the Hague International Model United Nations or TIMON conference in the Netherlands, followed by international high schools in the Middle East and Asia. Uh, mainly, there are two types of uh, MUN conferences, although I will not go into the details of the proced procedures of them. Uh, there is one spectacular specific MUN type. It's the time on the Hague International Model UN, because it granted in uh, 1997, it granted associated status as an NGO with the UN Department of Public Information, UNDPI, and in 2002, for the first time, uh, late Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General Kofi Annan, uh, attended closing ceremonies of this conference as keynote speaker. What about our beloved country, Turkey? Not Turkey, Turkey from now on. In uh, 1995, the first MUN uh, conference in Turkey called Turkish International Model United Nations TIMON was hosted by Üsküdar American Academy. And then four years later in 1999, uh, Model United Nations Development Program MUNDP was hosted by Coach School. Worldwide, uh, according to a study by Obendorf and Randerson in 2012, worldwide, it's claimed that over 400,000 students participate in MUN conferences every year. And this number is much more right now. There are some basic rules, some fundamental rules uh, for delegates, for participants to follow during the conferences. The first one is maintain diplomacy. Second one, the best debater is the best listener. Here, listening skills are important and focusing on paying attention to your, uh, your, uh, your colleague and the other participants saying. Next one, turn a perceived weakness into a strength because it's it's a kind of strategy uh, to form to form a strength from a perceived weakness, and then to convince the judges, the audiences. Find the universal principle everyone agrees on. This is compromising, negotiating, and convincing the other delegates. Capture the audience's attention by using facts. Never underestimate your opponent. Never lose your temper. This is easier said than done. I know this very well, but it's a very uh, important rule. Never lose your temper. And one strategy does not fall. So you have to be uh, uh, elastic, you have to adapt yourself for the new discussions and resolutions. When it comes to experiential learning, uh, there is a famous quote, and I love, I, I love this quote, and it uh, addresses to me at the same time by Benjamin Franklin. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. This is um, very important for me as well, because if I involve in the subjects 
uh, I learn better. We have David Cole, is the uh, uh, name father, I will say, uh, of the experiential learning concept. Uh, he says, an exclusive learning style related to life experiences and is generally different from in-class and lecture-based learning. Particularly critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication leadership, entrepreneurship, and social abilities are formed or improved through experiences. And many educational institutions continue to include experiential elements such as training, field objects, and in-class experiential learning exercises in their curriculum, in addition to traditional academic studies of learners. One of the primary justification for MUN conferences and other simulations arises in the constructivist notion that learners build an understanding of the world and the language needed to understand it through experiences which is understandable regarding the argument of an earlier study by Mahoney in 2004, that we form mental models of society and our place in it through participation and the ordering of our experiences. In a class focused on, uh, focused on experiential and situated learning activities, students practice acting as delegates at the UN and they conduct role plays, collaborate, draft and redraft position papers, rehearse speeches and practice negotiation and diplomatic interactions. So English for specific purposes, it's a term that has traditionally been used for courses which aim at teaching the English language needed for specific situations mainly related to academic or occupational context. context. We uh, often hear another uh, key terms like English for academic uh, purposes uh, or military English, medical English, uh, media English, all are uh, the subtitles of English for specific purposes. As Stoikovic et al state, Designing an ESP course needs balancing contents and linguistic issues. And it's inevitable for ESP teachers to undergo relevant functional pedagogy and methodology. In this, uh, in this view, MUN helps learners solve problems in a given discourse community where people are involved in the target communication as a network, network of interrelated individuals with a shared set of goals, purposes, and understandings of the ways in which language works. Primarily, ESP is especially impactful due to high student motivation and immediate real world application. And it's very difficult to teach a foreign language in a learning environment if the student does not have the desire to learn a language. So from this point of view, it becomes important to make the student active and willing, as Gernexis states. The potential for a more realistic target language interaction at an MUN conference, often with delegates of other nationalities, is seen as a powerful motivating force to propel and encourage students through a, through a period of intensive preparation. Similarly, MUN advocates claim that students participate in conferences, practice, and potentially improve, and that motivation and a sense of achievement are formidable drivers of language building. Here we have on the screen Dr. Zoltan Dernier. Uh, peace be upon him. We have lost him a very short time ago. As he says, Motivation is related to one of the most basic aspects of the human mind. And most teachers and researchers will agree that it has a very important role in determining success or failure in any learning situation. 
My personal experience is that 99% of language learners who really want to learn a foreign language will be able to master a reasonable working knowledge of it as a minimum, regardless of their language aptitude. And finally, when it comes to teaching skills, as approaches and methods in language teaching have changed throughout history, so have teachers teaching skills being affected by this change and still keeps changing. Levy in 2016 conducted 150 hours of observations and a series of interviews with students and educators over nine months at an American high school renowned for its program size and strong performance. And he concluded that MUN became a place for educators to provide a scaffolded young adult partnership where educators provide intellectual, administrative, and personal support to students. So after uh, examining the key terms, key uh, concepts, I will continue with my own research. I submitted this uh, as a research paper, a final paper to my supervisor, associate professor, Dr. Uh, Nazlı Güngör Hocam. It's a qualitative method study that aims to find out the effects of MUN conferences on students' motivation and teachers' teaching skills, along with their opinions about the effects of MUN conferences on their personal and professional development. The sample was determined through purposeful sampling and snowball sampling at the same time. And I utilized structured interviews as data collection tool. It was conducted with 10 students from Turkey, the US, Colombia, Bulgaria, and Germany, and five teachers from Turkey who participated in at least one MUN conference before. The opinions of the students and teachers about their MUN conference experiences were collected by sending structured interview questions via Google Forms, and the questions are, what do you think about your MUN experience? How have the MUN conferences you have attended affected your motivation so far? Do you think that MUN conferences you have attended developed your skills such as leadership, critical and creative thinking, problem solving, cooperation, public speaking, teamwork, global citizenship, and intercultural communicative competence? And the last question, specific question for teacher participants, teacher and trainer participants. Do you think the MUN conferences you have attended contributed to your teaching skills? If so, could you please explain how they did? So the findings, the first question, what do you think about your MUN experience? Teacher four says, as an advisor, I think I'm experienced to guide my prospective delegates as effectively as possible. Student seven says, I was really excited at first. I didn't believe I could do it, but then I felt more relaxed. I added a lot of new things to myself. I made friends. It was a bit of a concern at first, but it was really nice. I think it's an activity that every student should attend. Student eight, I very much appreciated it to have the possibility to attend MUN conferences because I learned how the different UN bodies function in detail. I also met people with similar interests. It is just an amazing experience to put it that way. It is always, always nice to be in an international setting and talk about topics you find interesting. The second question, how have the MUN conferences you have attended affected your motivation so far? Teacher two says, I have been affected positively and developed myself both intellectually and morally. After all of these conferences, I have decided to enroll in human rights master program. Teacher four says, as an advisor, it's my sincere belief that conferences brush up students' comprehension skills and make them better speakers. 
It's like killing a number of birds with one stone. Student one says, they have increased my motivation to do more research on global matters and geopolitics. However, with more knowledge, I have started to feel a bit of despair towards the future of the planet. Student three, really good. I was scared at first, but then I met some people like me and we became friends really quickly. We are friends on social media now. We still share opinions. Student seven, I was very excited at first. Entering such an environment for the first time was a bit of a worry. But after that, I had a lot of fun, learned a lot of new things and made a new friends. It was a very nice and fun experience for me. Student eight, they made me more confident in my English skills and in my knowledge of how international relations work, which is why I was more and more motivated for every upcoming conference. The limited time we have to make resolutions also motivated me to get things done fast. So here, time management and also crisis management is crucial. Third question was uh, a kind of uh, multiple choice. And here are the results. You can have a look at them. So among 10 skills that were examined and revealed in the earlier studies in the literature, the participants put forward public speaking and teamwork skills first. These two skills were followed by critical thinking, problem solving, cooperation, leadership, global citizenship, creative thinking, and intercultural communicative competence skills, respectively. Their answers to the first two questions also supported this result, which is also consistent with the previous studies in the literature. And the last question, a specific question for teacher and trainer participants. Teacher one says, yes, I'm more focused on raising multicultural global citizens all the world. Teacher two says, when I argue about a problem or try to find a solution with my teammates, I can easily figure out the general picture and I strongly convince them about my arguments, critical thinking, creative thinking, negotiating skills, as you can see. Teacher three, each MUN conference is an opening to the world. They widen the advisor's horizon. The flow of debates can be used during the classes at school. Watching the high school students organize the conferences in such a meticulous way makes the advisors proud. And teacher four, the same as in question two applies here. Additionally, I may say that I learned how to stick to different acquisition input-based techniques to guide my students better and cons consolidate four skills successfully in my sessions. As a discussion, uh, in parallel, uh, with the findings in the literature, MUN is one of the most prominent and effective in, in experiential learning platforms that combine numerous academic skills at once and addresses all language learners and teachers who, who aim to enhance their multiple skills and capabilities. Participants, both students and teachers at conferences have many chances to observe how delegates in the committees try to find alternative solutions to real world problems based on the combination of their observation and experiences, which is provided by experiential learning. Likewise, MUN conferences enable, enable them to face their primary reactions to real world events and to go through a secondary reflection process in order to improve their perspectives, which leads them to pursue further acad academic or professional careers. The participants' answers to these structured interview questions indicates that MUN conferences served as a memorable practice by enabling them to observe their experiences and to turn these observations into new experiences, decisions, and skills. 
Finally, mm -hmm. calling these suggestions in the study by Staley et al. 2020, English teaching professionals can address ESP needs in their own context by following best practices of scaffolding activities, adapting material, materials for the needs of each particular student population, and incorporating feedback into curricular revisions. It can be highly recommended that MUN courses and training programs should be included in teaching programs and the curriculum of all grades of schools. A sensible and responsible educational policy will never turn a blind, blind eye to the long-term benefits of fostering, promoting, and encouraging MUN conferences. It can be concluded that MUN conferences are beneficial for students and teachers, not only in enhancing their motivation and their teaching skills, but also in improving numer numerous skills necessary for a successful academic, professional, and personal life. Most particularly, besides improving language skills, enhancing motivation, and improving teaching skills, MUN conferences have been restated to develop participants 21st century skills, or you can say global skills or soft skills and social abilities considerably. Here is my reference list. And here it's time for me to commemorate good old days here. It's uh, in 2008, Sanremo, Italy. It's the seventh international competition for military academies on law of armed conflict. And this is the uh, Turkish military academy, Karahar Bukulu team. As you can see here at 22, 23 year old me. And beside me, uh, Dan Major, an instructor, instructor in international relations and now Professor Dr. Haldun Yalçınkaya, he is the head of the international relations department in Tob Etu University of Technology and Economy. Um, this was my first in, uh, international experience. And this was kind of a model NATO. Maybe I didn't mention uh, there are not only model United Nations, but also uh, model NATO, model European Union, model OECD, and model Interpol, as far as I know. These were the, these were the good old days. And finally, I want to thank to, first of all, first and foremost, Pidam Kılınç, my uh, beloved wife, without whom I will always feel incompetent, who is uh, always an un conditionally with me in both my darkest and happiest times, uh, who is the mother of my little major general and my little princess for sacrificing her time and for uh, her ir irreplaceable presence in my life. Retired Colonel Aisha Wozda, she is here. My first teacher of English language in Maltepe Military High School from which I graduated in 2004 who literally made me love English thanks to her mother-like mother and kind-hearted manners and attitudes towards us in the classroom, whose insight and knowledge into the subject matter steered me through this research and presentation, to whom I owe so much. Next, you here, Aydan Hocam, for guiding, supporting, encouraging and always inspiring me positively and making me feel confident, confident in my abilities. And above all this, for being a wonderful role model in the field in ELT society. And Demir Gülkan Karajan Hocam is also here, I guess. I can see because of my screen sharing, but at the, uh, at the beginning of the uh, session, he was here and I hope he's still here a technology genius, a research assistant in the Department of English Language Teaching, teaching at uh, Istanbul Medical University. 
for providing guidance and feedback in preparing online interview forms and helping generously with uh, other digital competence skills I needed to conduct my study. Then associate, associate Professor Dr. Nazlı Güngör, my lecturer in the courses, research methods in education, writing skills one and two, critical reading and writing, and approaches and methods in ELT. One of the most promising and conscientious instructors in our ELT program for setting me off on the road to this research paper. Her lectures, comments, recommendations, feedback and uh, feed forwards were vital in inspiring me to think outside the box from multiple perspectives to form a comprehensive and objective critics. And you, all the distinguished participants who took the time to join here and uh, be with me. Thank you very much. This is the end of my presentation. Extremely uh, beneficial and informative session. And people are thanking and the chat box uh, uh, for the same uh, purpose. Now you have mentioned that uh, there's not only model United Nations, but there's also uh, model uh, NATO, model Interpol. And I somehow get the feeling that models are more successful than the real ones. <laughs> Good remark, Ojan. Good remark. To be honest, I, I just couldn't honest, hold, I my, hold my tongue, you know, I had to say it. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> and you kept mentioning ESP, but at the same time, I feel that this mod, this uh, model United Nations or whatever model you're talking about also uh, addresses CLIL, content and language integrated learning. Exactly. And at the same time, integ it, is, it has an integrated approach where all the skills, language, yeah and soft wise are interwoven students need to read write speak listen um, discuss debate um, of course develop their social skills you know that kind of thing so um, it sounds like each and every school somehow needs to get in this into this uh, program. Exactly, Oja. Is it easy to get into this program? Can I, for example, imagine that I have a school? Mm -hmm. Can I start it at my school? Is it easy or is it very Ojan. hard? Oja, great question. But uh, this is beyond my scope. Okay. But thank God uh, we have my commander. My, uh, my, my dear command, my dear commander Aisha Bozda, okay. because she is a trainer, uh, uh -huh. an MUN trainer, and she knows how this process is going. Okay. So maybe she can answer this question. Aisha, jump. Can can you? Yep. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you would like to join an MUN conference, you should start a club in your school. Okay. Uh, the students who are interested in global issues, mm -hmm. and after that, the, uh, this club can join uh, approximately three or four conferences each year. Okay. Uh, the, in the schools I worked, we used to uh, attend two uh, conferences abroad, of uh -huh. course, before pandemic, and two conferences in the country in, at home. Uh, how do we do it? We follow the, the announcements of these schools. For example, Coach uh, MUNDP is a very prestigious, very good one. Mm. Uh, and apply by internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, sending messages and sending the delegates, they assign the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we send a number of the delegates. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, when the time comes, we go and have four day conference there. Um, uh, but on the other hand, you can also 
have MUN organized MUN conference in your own school too. Okay. Uh, in secondary schools, yeah, they organize junior MUN conferences. In high schools, they organize MUN conferences. Mm -hmm. um, th this is all student organized uh, conferences. Teachers do not take part. Actually, but there's a kind one, of a supervisor, I guess. One supervisor in mm. school. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, students are responsible from transportation, committees, oh, uh, inviting uh, chairs from different schools. Uh, this is that's why. Uh, let me, uh, if it's if we have enough time, let me yes, explain one of my yes. experiment experience. We were in Robert College. Uh, and they uh, also there are social events after the conference mm -hmm. in the evenings students enjoy themselves mm -hmm. and mingle with each other and mm -hmm. they promised us dinner on the boat trip in Bosphorus Ooh. but yeah they're very pretty <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> events are amazing mm -hmm. uh, it's not just uh, very serious stuff also there is uh, there's a lot of fun also uh -huh. and unfortunately we didn't have dinner it was mm. not uh, arranged and when we came back to school we said at nine o'clock we are hungry and those kids those students arranged pizzas in istanbul uh -huh. for for about 200 people whoa okay. <laughs> yeah and they were carrying the pizzas in their hands running making yeah this is a uh, incredible uh, experience <laughs> they are arranging transportation Yes. Uh, every kind of stuff. That's why I think uh, it's amazing. Also, uh, the school last year I worked, uh, the primary school pr principal asked me to prepare a kind of MUN. Uh, primary school. Primary, yes. Ooh, for the fourth okay. graders. Okay. Uh, now I'm making a plan for them. I'm going to send them uh, the procedure and next year they are going to apply of course their topics will be uh, environmental yes of course of <laughs> yeah. co i can imagine i cannot yeah, in, i cannot yeah. imagine 10 year old kids talking about uh yeah. political problems no. or no. military <laughs> problems yes definitely yeah. <laughs> pick it is there a kind of a handbook or online um information uh, that teachers who are interested can find yeah, is there anything there is. that you can, uh, any yeah. resource that you can give us sure. here? Sure, of course. Uh, all, uh, for example, Coach School has their uh, handbook. Uh -huh. uh, we can download it from their okay. internet site. Uh, it's Great. possible. Great. Also, so the teachers friend... can download this, read sure. it, get information, and yeah. then start uh, a, a club at their school if they're interested to tell the truth i learned with my students okay i see <laughs> uh, yes. well i know so, has already mentioned that practice active involvement increases yes, learning yes. so <laughs> <laughs> but of Ojan, course uh, uh, yes I uh, sorry in addition to my uh, commander's uh, answer there is a great resource an online resource i can write it into chat box could you please if yes. you wish uh, because there are may be uh, in, yeah. yeah teachers who are interested uh ah. well uh, most of the time i believe private school teachers uh, yes, will be interested i can't imagine a state school um teacher dreaming about having <laughs> model united nations uh, club at their school but uh thank you very much uh, if you're interested uh, my dear colleagues, Ali Hoja has mentioned the site in the chat box. I cannot see any other uh, questions. Uh, I, I just can see um, thank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Extremely uh, informative, great presentation, or that kind of thing. So I need to uh, ask you questions. That's my responsibility. <laughs> As okay, a moderator, yeah. just to give you a hard time. <laughs> now, um, you said that uh, students are given a country. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they are also given a problem, I guess. Yes or no. Okay. So the student now re is responsible from Ethiopia, let's say, mm -hmm. and the uh, problem is, I don't know, um, students not going to, uh, I mean, children not going to school. Yeah, Okay. exactly. This okay. is called the agenda, agenda of the session. Okay. okay, just help me, you know, mm -hmm. so that people can also understand how this works. Okay. So now I am responsible from Ethiopia and my agenda is children who do not have a, a, a chance to go to school. Mm -hmm. How much time do I have? Well, John, uh, as I mentioned before, I attended in 2008 model okay. NATO. Mm -hmm. So personally, I didn't participate in any model United Nations. So I don't know the procedure, the time management issue there. But as far as I know, if it is online, it's two or three days long uh, event. But if it is in person, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, it's one week maximum. And here, yeah, five days. Uh, here, Kuntanam knows better than me and more than me. Does, but, uh, doesn't matter who can, whoever can answer because uh, we need a, a step by step mm -hmm. kind of uh, guidance to this. Okay, so we are I all can, new, I, you know. I can I can answer regarding my personal experience in Italy. We had five days from uh -huh. the beginning to the end, from Monday to Friday, and we were kind of a NATO uh, decision decision making comedy. And we were reshuffled there. Uh -huh. uh, that means I didn't represent my own country. Uh -huh. I represented a fake, an imaginary country called Madiran. I still, mm. I still remember that name. And I was the head of the uh, constitutional court. And there was a, there was a, uh, there was an officer cadet from Australia and mm -hmm. another one uh, from the United States. And uh, we had given a problem, but that problem uh, grew day by day. There was a bad guy, uh, the bad, the bad policy maker country, a very real life scenario. And then we were uh, we were uh, expected to follow the uh, conventions, the Geneva Conventions and the Hague Conventions on international humanitarian law, and they mm -hmm. are all the affiliated protocols. Mm -hmm. And we were um, we were uh, making and writing our resolutions by uh, referring to the articles, the main uh, the main um, legislations. Okay. And the more the more pre precise your uh, resolutions were the higher credit and grade you got mm -hmm. so day by day it's the, the crisis has grew up grown up and then uh, at the last day we made a common decision it was either to go on war or not mm. okay. but in 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 the model united nations of course there are a lot of uh, committees like World Health Organization, like yes. crisis committees, like World Food Program, and uh, they are not uh, as um, as violent as ours. Okay. Were. Okay. Uh, I, I bet it wasn't violent. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe you couldn't find a better term. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Jean. there may be more conflict if uh, yeah, we yeah, are talking yeah, about conflict. more uh, military issues or political issues. Of course, uh, environmental issues are uh, easier to deal with, at least, well, it, at least if people are intelligent, they will understand that there are environmental problems, you know, uh, although some reject it. Uh, I can understand that. My daughter uh, was a part of Model United Nations. Wow. Uh, and uh, she also became a chair later after 
gaining the necessary experience, she learned a lot. Um, she uh, definitely improved herself. But after each and every uh, moon, that's what they call it, she was exhausted. She yeah. was like burnt out. So the school would give them a week off after this uh, moon uh, conference so that they could rest. <laughs> I can because understand there's, how there's she feels. so like much that. going on. They start yeah. early in the morning, they go yeah. through the day discussing, you know, debating sometimes some uh, arguments uh, more like disagreements or sometimes more like fights <laughs> you know yeah uh, and Hocam, be, in the evening because they, everything yeah. sorry uh, everything is happening at the same time mm -hmm. at the same time you have to listen you have to not take notes you have yeah. to pay attention to what the others are saying mm -hmm. you have to research you have to compromise you have to negotiate you have you have to think critically and creatively so it really cons consumes you up so what level do you think students should be at to be a part of this Ojan, i think for me, at least B2. At least B2. Or at least B1. Because if it's uh, lower than B1, it, it will be I very difficult to understand what's going B1 on. B1 as well. B1 level students, do you think they can manage this? I think, Ojam. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Are there any other questions? This has become a kind of a yes. Yes, Gökhan Hocam. Hello, Hocam. It's great to see you. The same here. <laughs> okay. So I have not a question, but a comment for, for Ali Hocam. Uh, thank you for this great presentation. It was very well designed. I have took you, some you. notes for you to later discuss together. <laughs> and you, as you have already said, I work at Istanbul Medipur University. And the university I work at actually uh, hosted a few uh, moon conferences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of your study was about motivation. And I was yeah. able to see many high schoolers there with very big smiles on their faces. And I was able to see how excited they were. So I wanted to add this. And also, do you know any online uh, platforms for this kind of uh, moon type, uh, let's say, uh, activities? If not, I have one on my mind. And I believe mm -hmm. these kind of platforms are used in teacher education as well. Mm -hmm. And yes, Ojam, Wali Ojam, if there is, please enlighten us. Ojam, thank you very much. I have already written my online resource resource uh, portal in the chat box. Uh, yeah. Other than that, there are, I think there are uh, other platforms. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Komtanım, if you know, you can share with us. Uh, I, I was trying to find the internet site, but I, I can't uh, share with you. There is OMUN. Uh, uh, it is uh, based in far, uh, far, far east. Uh, and uh, about every two months, they organize an international online conference. Mm. And they have junior MUN too. Okay. And it is uh, free. Yeah. Students oh. can join free, yes. They send uh, all the mm -hmm. uh, all the documents, they give training also. When uh -huh. I find I can share, I'm going to is this for individual start. students or is it for schools? Individual students. Individual students. Yeah. Yes. Which okay. uh, platform were you talking about? You mentioned that Hocam, you know uh, a platform. Yes, actually, but I don't remember the name. But okay. there was a paper written by Rivero and Myers in 2019. It was called Preparing, uh, you know, Globally Digital, uh, pardon, Globally Competent Teachers. So it's yeah. used in teacher education as well as, you know, EFL and ESP. 
and I will share the you know platform name with you later on. In uh, on that platform, every group of students was able to choose a country, and that country comes with its problems and positive aspects. And these groups of students were expected to discuss their ideas, and you know they have to make peace, and they they have to make. Uh, you know, some compromises and find some solutions to the global problems. So it can be used by teachers right away. We don't have to wait for a specific time. Okay. So it's, re it's readily available by, you know, to use by anyone. So I will share the link after I find it right away in, in the chat box. Okay. Uh, Aisho Jam, thank you very much for uh, well, sharing the uh, link. Uh, well, I can also share these links uh, when we release the video so that people okay. who are interested yes, uh, can yeah. easily see or you may want to uh, share the link there as your comment, you know, to the mm -hmm. uh, session. Yes, so I'll people, do that right away. Yeah, people who are interested can easily see if uh, they want to reach that site, if they want to reach that link, they, 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 they can easily find them there. Uh, but I will also save uh, Aisho Hajam's uh, link here and share it there. Uh, but of course, we need to wait for a week uh, to release the video. Thank you very much, Gökhan Hajam, for, uh, Thank you, Hajam, for this your contribution. Uh, okay. Any other comments or any other uh, questions? Are you still raising your hand, Gökhan Ajam, or no? Okay. Ajam, I just lowered it. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, there, can I ask you one more question, Ali Ajam? Of course, Ajam. Of course. Uh, you said that you used structured interview. Yeah. And as your fourth question, if I'm mm -hmm. not wrong, mm -hmm. you used uh, jargon. Yeah. Intercultural communicative competence. Yes. Uh, did you, the participants understand what you were referring to? Or did you have to explain to them what intercultural communicative competence means? Hocam, honestly speaking, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, expand it. I didn't explain it. Hmm. But I didn't uh, take any feedback uh, stating that we didn't understand this question. Mm. And we pilot test this uh, before conducting the real research with my supervisor. Uh -huh. and, and this norm, this intercultural communicative competence is uh, on, the, on, on demand, on the rise. Uh -huh. And I, I believe it will, uh, we, we will hear it uh, more and more in the future, in the coming years. Of course, I yeah. have no objection to that. It's just a jargon. It's yes, all, only, uh, it's a term uh, that sociolinguists can understand, that ELT experts can understand. I don't expect John in the street to understand what intercultural community competence refers to. That's why I, I said, because you, ref you talked about students participating. Mm -hmm. So intercultural part is clear, but community mm -hmm. competence is still something that we uh, debate on. We talk about what it covers, how it can be uh, improved, you know, that kind of thing. So I was uh, really curious to learn if students came up with their own Maybe, yes, maybe. Or... maybe maybe they, they searched themselves on the on the internet okay. and maybe. They, yeah. they decided if it uh, applies for them or not. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, um, uh, thank you very much again. As there are no other questions, I'm going to uh, say goodbye, say my farewell, and close the session. Thank you very much. Uh, Aloja. I don't know how to thank you because this was this was really something very new for most of us and uh, it is a, a great mission to open a new window you know 
for people. Uh, people may want to look out of that window or they just look at the window and say, well, what a nice window, <laughs> you know, that kind of, but still you provided us with that opportunity. Thank you very much. And as I usual, thank you. thank you, my dear colleagues, for being here, being with us. Uh, you make these sessions possible. So I'm going to say, send my best regards to you. And I hope to see you next week. Mm -hmm.